Magandang mainit na hapon po sa inyo lahat. Actually, this is not a, what we call the formal session, but just an introduction, sort of trying to whet your appetite for the rest of the camp. Kaya at uh, bayan nyo munang maging uh, informal tayo rito sa first session na ito. Ay, uh, magpasalamat muna ako sa suporta na inyong ibinigay sa amin dito sa camp na ito. Alam nyo nung, when we started planning for the camp, one of the things that we uh, fear is that baka walang masyadong umaten katatapos lang ng pandemic. So I send I send uh, uh, letters to all churches asking sino ba ang magsusupport. Eh, siguro they were so busy, walang masyadong sumagot. So we were expecting that we will only get a small a small number of delegations. And we had a previous, previous experience before that we were not able to meet our target attendance. Eh, we end up na nag-abono doon sa amin. Kaya sabi namin, sige, gawin na lamang natin 500 ang target natin. Uh, that's a safe assumption. Kaya kinuha namin ito, actually pang 500 lang. But on the second day of registration, we had a different problem. Kung paano tatanggihan yung mga uh, gusto pang sumama. And so, one week pa lang, eh, yun na ang pinag-pray namin doon sa church. Sa mumroblema na kami, <clears throat> gustong-gusto na namin tanggapin lahat, kaya lang yung lugar cannot accommodate every one of them. At meron din po kaming mga ilang mga ihingi ng common in sa inyo if you have uh, received the, the uh, souvenir program, ang sabi po ron, one of the speakers would be Paul Washer. And then the other one would be uh, Jamie Tucker who is the lieutenant of Paul Washer. That was the plan. They agreed, they made a commitment, but then Paul Washer had an attack, heart attack noong February. We were still hoping that by this time, E pwede na siya, pero hindi talaga umugra. So we were practically looking for a replacement at ang nakuha namin, somebody from uh, Trinity Baptist Church of New Jersey, si Pastor Bart Carlson. But he would only be with us through uh, Zoom. Uh, at si uh, Jamie Tucker, na because of some uh, family matters, eh, nag-cancel din. Mas late na siya nag-cancel, kaya buti na lang ready si Pastor Steve of Meyer to replace him. Now, uh, Pastor Paul Washer, hindi naman siya talaga pupunta personal. Dapat ay eh, Zoom lamang siya. We were trying to make an experiment kung papaano na magkaroon ng ganyang uh, universal uh, look yung ating mga camps na magkakaroon ng online na nasa malayo. And in the future, I would suggest, or if we will be given a chance again, what we want to do is to have parallel uh, camp in some provinces when we would be exchanging speakers through technology. So that was the plan. So ito yung ating uh, gagawin. This family camp's theme would be, Lord, teach us to pray. Now, obvious naman that this was taken from Luke 11, the request of the apostles seeing Jesus in prayer. In verse 1, he said, Lord, teach us to pray. That was the request. We all, and, and we think that we all must pray such prayer continually. Dapat tuloy-tuloy that we desire to be, to be learners in prayer. Prayer is often neglected due to sin, due to circumstances, or some worldly influences. Kaya nga, yung question na ito ng ating Panginoon, ng, ng mga disciples sa Panginoon, set the stage for the teaching of the most popular uh, model of prayer, what we call the Lord's Prayer, which is, should rightly be called the model prayer. For my part, I am tasked to just, as I have said, whet your appetite on prayer and give us a sense of our need to always have 
this prayer in heart. Lord, teach us to pray. So if you have your Bibles with you, let us open our Bible to Luke 11 verse 1 and then we will jump to Matthew 6, 5 to 15. Luke 11, 1. Now Jesus was praying in a certain place and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Now Matthew gave a more detailed account of the Lord's teaching about prayer in Matthew 6, 5 to 15. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and on the, street, uh, and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, Pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sits in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetition as the heathens do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things that you have need before you ask Him. In this manner, therefore, you pray, Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil, from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us come to the Lord in prayer and ask that he would guide us in our study of his word. Let's pray. Salamat po aming Panginoon for the clarity of your word. And we thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit in making us understand and even absorb the, the teachings of your word. Lord, we pray that sa ganitong kalagayan na mainit at hindi komportable, that you would grant us enough grace that we would benefit from the teaching of your word. And may you be with your servant, Lord, that you would grant him wisdom, you would grant him the right word, and you would grant him, Lord, uh, yung pananampalataya at pagtingin sa iyo na sana ikaw magbibigay sa kanya ng kapangyarihan. Sal Salamat po sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Okay. Dito po sa dalawang binasa natin ay makikita po natin ang pangangaral ng ating Panginoon tungkol sa panalangin. The first thing that we should notice is that we are encouraged that we should all be students of prayers. Yun po ang ipinakita. Paano po natin nakita ito? The Lord, itong request na to, yung Lord's Prayer was a response to the request of the disciples as we have said. Lord, teach us to pray. Now you may ask, how can they say, teach us to pray, considering that they were Jews? Eh, alam naman po natin ang mga Hudyo. Ang mga Hudyo ay filled with moments of prayer, with acts of prayers. They pray three times a day. They have their uh, shakarit, which is the morning prayer, the mincha, which is the afternoon prayer, and the arbit, which is the evening prayer. Punong-puno sila ng panalangin. They were schooled in prayer. From their infants or from their childhood, they were taught how to pray. They have witnessed prayers. <laughs> and for sure, eh, sila rin ay nanalangin na. Sila ay lumapit na sa Panginoon sa panalangin. They have prayed for and prayed with each other. They have witnessed Jesus Christ in prayer. If they did not, they will be, kasi kung kulang sila sa panalangin, if they did not follow the customs of the Jews in prayer, they would surely be attacked. That would be one of the accusations of their detractors. But we don't hear any, anything about their lack of prayer. So we can say from outside perhaps that they were already praying man. But notice that when they observed the manner of Christ in prayer, 
they realize that they need to experience or learn prayer. We were told that when Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, it was then that he was asked, teach us to pray. It was when they observed Jesus Christ. And we know that the Bible described Jesus Christ as a praying man. He started his ministry by praying for 40 days and 40 nights with fasting before he even uh, go to the ministry. Before choosing his disciples, he prayed. Yung kanyang apostle, he prayed overnight. And he would wake up early in the morning to pray for hours all by himself. One time he was joined by his disciples. But they could not, hindi nila kayang sabayan ng Panginoon. They fell asleep while Jesus Christ was still agonizing in prayer. And they were rebuked by Jesus Christ. And not surprising that they desired to be like him. They desired to be able to pray like Jesus Christ. I want to imagine, I'm not saying that it's what the Bible teaches, but I want to imagine the Apostle Peter trying to be like Jesus Christ. Alam si Peter, gusto niya laging gayahin ng Panginoon, gusto niya laging sumunod. I can imagine him trying to wake up uh, in the morning and trying to pray like Jesus Christ. But lo and behold, after perhaps 30, 30 minutes, eh, wala na siyang maipanalangin. Hindi niya kayang gawin. Or looking at Jesus, looking at Jesus as self, what he must say, siguro tinignan niya, ang mapit pa na langin ng Panginoon. How can he pray that long? You know, when I was a young minister, I had that same kind of experience. As a young Christian, hindi pa nga ako minister, I was a young Christian, a young convert. I was looking up to these pastors who is always telling us how they prayed, ano yung time nila in prayer, and then reading some biographies and reading from some messages. Nakita ko pa yung mga great men of faith are always men of prayer. John Wesley is known to be praying for eight hours. Eight hours prayer. And he even said, that he did not think much of ministers who will not spend at least four hours a day in prayer. Ganun niya pinahalagahan yung panalangin. So, nung, nung mabasa ko ito, yung mga Puritans, alam natin that they were champions in prayers. They, they, they spent so much time in prayer. So sabi ko, if I want to be a good Christian, and in the future to be a minister, I must learn to pray. I must imitate them. So, yun ang, yun, yun ang aking ginawa. Naghahanap ako lagi ng lugar. I have no place of solitude in our house. So, ang nakita ko ay Fort Bonifacio before it was developed. I went to living ng mga bayani, find a suitable place, and started pouring out my heart in prayer. But only for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, I fell asleep. When I wake up, I do not know what to pray for anymore. So ito yung kanyang uh, na, 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 naranasan ko. The next attempt, sabi ko, I must bring my Bible and bring some books. So dinala ko yung mga Bible, balik ulit ako sa Fort Bonifacio and try to read. After a few pages, nakatulog na naman ako. Wala na namang nangyari doon sa aking panalangin. And it dawned on me that I do not know how to pray. I do not know prayer. I just pray because it's Christian to pray. It's natural to pray. But I need to learn really to pray. So I can imagine they had that same experience. Another reason probably also why they felt that they did not know to pray is that because they did not see the need. When Jesus was there, physically before them, everything that they need, they can just approach Jesus. Lord, we need this. We need bread. We need fish. We need something to feed them. We need to heal this and heal him. Heal them. 
They really didn't see the need. Lahat ng kailangan nila, Jesus Christ was supplying to them and they can physically just tell them, ito naman talaga weakness ng tao, di ba? Kapag ka nasa iyo na lahat, yung mga pangangailangan, kapag ka nakuha mo na yung mga pangailangan, minsan nawawala na ng spirit of prayer. Parang, who needs God? Who needs prayer? I have everything. And if ever one would pray in that condition, ang um, gagawin lang yun because I'm a Christian. Christian should pray. Not because I really need the help of God. But seeing Jesus, seeing Jesus in much prayer, then they realize there is something we must learn about prayer. And that is exactly the goal of this camp. The goal of this camp is that you feel inadequate with regards to prayer. That you would see and feel the need to learn and to grow more and more. And as you grow more in prayer, the more you would see the inadequacy of your time spent in prayer. And the more you will be drawn closer to God, the more you will pray. And if you still don't see the need to continue growing in prayer, note the response of the Lord, the teaching of the Lord. When we go to the account of Matthew that gave more details, in Christ's teaching on prayer, he warned them of useless prayers. Chapter 6, verse 5 of Matthew, And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogue and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received the reward, but when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret, and your father sees you in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep up empty praises as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask. So let us see, ano yung warning ng ating Panginoon? Ano yung warning na ito? The first warning of the Lord na dapat nating tignan so that alam natin, kung tayo marunong manalangin, is that incongruity between public prayer and private prayers renders our prayer as nothing and useless. Do not be like the hypocrites. Because, ang sabi sa atin, do not be like the hypocrites. They love to stand and pray in the synagogue and at the street corner that they may be seen. Now, this is not a condemnation of public prayer. Jesus was not saying you should never pray publicly to be seen by man. Jesus himself made public prayers. When he thanked the bread, it was heard by many. And I'm sure what was recorded in John 17, ay narinig din ang ating mga, ang mga alagad niya. We also... Uh, Read many corporate gathering for prayers. When Jesus, when, when Peter was in prison, they prayed. And in the, when they were waiting for the Holy Spirit to uh, empower the church, they prayed publicly. We ourselves, we gather in prayer. Yung ating MC kanina na nalangin, ako na nalangin, they are all public prayers, seen and heard by many. But note what was condemned, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogue and at the street and, and, and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. To be seen by men. But then, when we pray publicly, when we lead in prayer, we want to be seen. We want to be heard. Yung isang ang request ko rito, dahil sabi ko masyadong mababa itong stage, big crowd, 
kung pwedeng maglagay ng mas mataas na platform para mas kita ng lahat. So that when we preach, when we pray, we will be seen by all. We will be heard by all. When we pray in public, in prayer meetings, in worship services, are we not doing things to be seen and to be heard by men? When pastors stand behind pulpit to pray, lahat tayo, mga churches natin, may part doon, ang iba tawag nila pastoral prayer, sa iba tawag ay general prayer or a church prayer, we all stand. We use microphones. We stand and be seen. Wala naman ako alam na pastor na nagtatago sa likod. Eh, sabi ng Panginoon, eh, hindi ako dapat magpakita sa aking panalangin. But what is wrong with this is that His prayers are only public, for public consumption, just to be seen by man. So Christ told His disciples, but you, it's a strong contrast, but you, when you pray, go into your room, when you have shut the door, pray for your father, for who, who is in secret place, and your father who sees secret will reward you open. He said, these Pharisees, they pray to be seen, but you, go to your closet. Pray in your closet. Just between you and God. Again, it is not saying that the only, and, uh, only prayer that we should pray is the prayer in the closet. That that is the only prayer that will matter is the prayer in the closet. That is not what the what Jesus Christ was saying but rather it is the real test of a prayerful attitude is the prayer in the closet parang ano lang yan eh nung sabihin sa atin na do not nung sabihin sa atin do not love in words but indeed it may sound that we are being uh, forbidden to love in words but that is not true but what Ang ibig sabihin lang nito, do not, word, do not love in words, but indeed, is that loving in word can only be authenticated when it is coupled or proven by deed. Otherwise, when there is no good deeds, the love in words is not valid. The same thing we are told, do not, uh, uh, you, parang sinasabi na, Pwede kang manalangin in public, but be sure that your prayer in public is authenticated or proven to be honest, sincere, and faithful by your prayer in private. By your prayer in private. There must be a harmony between your public prayer life and your private prayer life Otherwise, it would be hypocrisy to pray in public. In other words, Jesus was saying that if you are not engaged, if it is not your practice that you pray in uh, privately, your public prayers are just to be seen by man. Therefore, it's hypocrisy. It's hypocrisy. Let me give you another example. Is it wrong for me to be seen in public with my arms wrapped around my wife? Or to say sweet words? Or to declare my love to my wife and even say some romantic words to my wife, even publicly? Is it wrong? Or, as we would see in the Facebook, magpo-post ng mga pictures na parang ang sweet nung dalawa, talagang uh, ang galing nung, nung, nung uh, couple na ito, talagang nagmamahalan sila. Masama ba yun? To declare my love publicly for my wife? I don't think so. Nothing is wrong with that. If I am as sweet, as caring, and as romantic to my wife, even in private. Otherwise, 
It's hypocrisy. If I am only loving to her publicly, if I can only declare my love for my wife publicly, but privately, I am cold. I am indifferent to her. That I don't even talk to her. Then my show of love for her is hypocrisy. And that is exactly what Christ said about neglecting private prayers, but engaging yourself in public ones. That's hypocrisy. You really don't have a heart of prayer. You really don't have a burden for the things that you are praying for. Kasi kung may burden ka, dun sa mga bagay na pinagpipray mo publicly, ipagpipray mo rin yun privately. Just between you and your God. Faithfulness in prayer is determined when no one sees, when no one hears but God. And the real test of communion ensues when we are alone with God. We are conscious that we are before someone who can read our thoughts, who can see our mind, who can read our hearts. We're before someone who is not impressed with words. We cannot just use cliches and jargons to please God. You know, in private, I, all, I, I even know someone when in private prayers, all he can say is, oh God, oh God, while looking at all the burdens in his heart. I know a pastor that looking at the list of the members of his church and all he can say is, oh God, bless, oh God. Because of so much burden. We can only be judged as faithful in prayer when we are before someone who is not impressed with words and there is nobody to admire our eloquence. Nobody would tell us, look how good he is in prayer. Ang haba niya mag-pray, ano? Talagang punong-puno yung... Maybe. But compared to his time, alone with God. Without regular, fervent, private prayers, I would dare to say that public prayers are hypocrisy. Useless before God. Christ said, you had your reward. You were admired. You were heard for your nice words. Good and eloquent in public prayer meetings. But not having private time before the Lord in prayer is hypocrisy. What they say in public are just rhetorics. Just eloquence. Just programmed thoughts. Not really the burdens of their heart. That is hypocrisy. In our prayer meeting, when, it, when we come to the church concerns, I don't give. I don't give items for prayer. I only tell them what the burdens of your heart. Express it in prayer and we will join you. When it comes to prayers out for uh, things outside the church, I just give reports. I give them news and tell them, to pray as the Lord burdens their heart. I often tell them, those who will stand, to pray for things that their hearts are not burdened for, please don't. Because that's hypocrisy. Anyone not having a private communion with God in prayer, I, I'm, I'm telling them, just keep quiet and join us. Quietly. Don't lead the congregation in prayer. When you're not having your time with the Lord, because that would be hypocrisy. That would be hypocrisy. And I say this boldly, that there is so much hypocrisy going on in private meetings, public meetings, and that it is, it's not speculations. Some of you pastors and leaders who are here can testify that when leaders come to me for counseling or for advice, I ask them, 
How is your private time with the Lord? How is your private devotion? And some would say, oh, uh, you know how busy pastors could be. I said, you cannot lead your congregation in devotion to God when you yourself are not devoted to that God. Even leaders, when they come to me, some church members with the permission of their permission of their, their, their pastors will come to me for counseling and advice. The first thing I would say is, how is your private devotion? Baka mamaya may complain ka about sa pastor mo, sa pastor iba na hindi mo pa pinagpipray. We got to examine ourselves. If our public act of prayer is in harmony with our private prayers, because if not, it's hypocrisy. Private pray, public prayer would be hypocrisy. Just for the hearing and the visuals of man. But then secondly, ang isa pang bagay na tinignan dito ng ating Panginoon is that belief and reliance in the act of prayer and not in the God who answers prayer is also hypoc not, not hypocrisy, but useless. In verse 7, we are told, and when you pray, do not use vain repetition as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Now, this is not, again, a condemnation of repeating our request to God. We know that Jesus Christ prayed three times to take this cup away from me. And the Apostle Paul prayed several times for the thorn in the flesh to be removed. We were also told in Luke 11, further in verse 5, about that persistent friend who need help and was knocking at the door of his friend who said he cannot, but he kept on asking and asking and asking until he was finally answered. But note what was defective in the prayer that was condemned. And when you pray, do not use vain repetition as the heathen do. For they think that they will be heard for their much word. It's not because of the power of God, but because of their much word. What's wrong again with that? Praying, the word praying is from a word which means towards, speak towards. Prosyukumai, speak towards. Meaning there is an object. Originally to speak out, utter, aloud, express a wish. Combination makes up a word emphasizing the direct approach of the one who prays before God. In seeking God's face, again, dadalin ulit tayo doon sa personal devotion. When we pray, we do not just, our, our focus is not on what we are asking, but on God. Prayer is communing with God to Him as the object of faith and the one who will answer one's prayer to speak consciously that you are before God. That's prayer. That is prayer. More than anything else, it is worship. Prayer is worshiping God. Not just desiring to be given by God. Jesus was clear on what vain repetition is. For they think that they will be answered because of many words. So let us add more words. Let us add more words. Let us say it again and again. Let us pray long prayers. That is believing in prayer rather than in the object of prayer. They think they have prayed so much because they have prayed so long. Like the Pharisees, they make long prayers. And it was mentioned about pagan, you know, the Tibetan prayer will. 
If you will go to a Tibetan temple, they have wheels that produce a sound when, when they are turned. And each wheel would represent a request. And so when they crack all these wheels, it would produce the number of rotation and the number of sound. They equate it to the number of petition that we have presented before God. The Roman Catholic concept of prayer. The more, the better. <laughs> we all experience, probably not all, most of our experience, our first communion, our regular communion. When after confession, you would be asked, okay, masyado mabigat yung kasalanan mo. Seven, pitong uh, Hail Mary at labing apat na Our Father. Mas mabigat yung kasalanan, mas marami, mas effective. But they do not have the monopoly of such error. We also sometimes are, are, are dragged into that and unknowingly we are dependent upon prayer. Let me just mention some. I'm not saying that these things that I would mention are evil in itself. But if not carefully applied. Halimbawa yung prayer chain. Prayer chain. Kailangan every hour somebody would pray. What does that mean? Dapat walang titigil. Kailangan tuloy-tuloy tayo. Ikaw, 6 o'clock. Ikaw, 4 o'clock. Diba, naguhugas ng plato. Uy, ako nga pala uh, in charge ngayon. Ayan, okay na. Tapos re-report mo na. Nakapag-pray na ako. Or when we depend on words in prayer. Or the length of prayers. Pahabaan ng panalangin para mas effective. And those who targets longer time in prayer are not really to enjoy longer time in communion, but believing that it is more effective if I would pray long and many would pray. Or praying on a set time as primary concern. Kailangan pag ganitong oras, manalangin ako. And ironically, the Lord's Prayer, which is part of this teaching and warning of the Lord on prayer, is being used. in this vain, repetitive prayer. Talagang pinapanalangin yung parabang pagpinalangin mo yung Lord, Lord's Prayer, eh talagang magkakaroon na. This again is rooted in the lack of personal communion with God. If you would examine closely, all these errors in prayer is rooted in the lack of communion with God. In the lack of communion with God. But praise be to God that the lesson given by the Lord on prayer did not end in simply warning our prayers, but we are given a model, a pattern of prayer, the Lord's prayer, which is more correctly called the model prayer. And that would be the goal of this camp. You would be hearing about the object of prayer, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. The motive of prayer, your kingdom come, you will be done, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The petition for provision, give us this day our daily bread. And the petition for protection, forgive us our sins, lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. And it is our hope that what this camp will leave in you is a continuous and growing desire to learn to pray, to commune more with God in prayer, and to have that right attitude and perspective of what prayer is and what prayer should be. Let us again come to the Lord and ask that He would truly bless our time together learning about prayer. Let's pray. Lord, truly, Lord, as we ponder upon your word, we can say that some of us are really only uttering prayers, saying prayers. Only some are truly praying. We pray, Lord, that you would truly burden the hearts of everyone today, this hour, 
that they would gain interest in truly asking the Lord, teach us to pray. And may we leave this camp truly convinced that we need to grow in, the, in this area of our faith in prayer. Bless your word, O oh God. In Christ's name, Amen. Bago po tayo dumako sa, sa ano, second session, ay may po muna tayong break na ilang minutes lang po. Uh, dapat po, ang, ang ano po natin ay 4.30, mag-start ulit sa uh, another session. So, pwede po kayong mag, mag gumamit ng comfort room. Meron po dito, meron po doon. Uh, kung nauhaw, meron po mga tubig doon. So, 4.30, mag-start po ulit tayo. Thank you po.